What's good, homies? What's good? What's good? It's your man, King Ray Ray. Back up in the joint again, man, with another dope piece of content. Coming at you one more time. You know how we always like to come at you, man. Let's get ready to do this, man. I appreciate y'all being in the building, man. Appreciate y'all being in the joint. Y'all see, I got my work frames on, man. Got my work frames on. Appreciate y'all being in the building, man. GLG in the building. Markel, what's good, young homie? Good to see you in the building, man. Royal T, what's good, man? What's good? T Money Five, I saw you, man. See you in the building, man. The Mr. J, what up? Zay Bright, what up? Sean Daylight, what up? Daylight, good to see you, man. B Shop, what up? Jess Quan, what's good with you, man? Chain is change is unexpected. Real talk, man. Salute to you. Cruz, what up, man? Uncommon, what's good with you, brother? My brother D Fleming, famo, what's good, man? Salute to you, man. On the road, man. Hey, appreciate you tuning in while you're on the road, bro. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Love by few, hated by many, man. Good to see you in the joint, man, as usual, bro. Good to see you, man. Let's go ahead and get the people, man. Maybe another minute and um, maybe another minute to get in here, man. Um, hopefully everybody been having a bang up day, man. Been really doing your thing, man. And uh, you know, it's um it's high time, man, we, you know, get into some King Ray Ray content for the day. Appreciate everybody being in the building, man, again, man. Look. All the new members, man, I appreciate it, man. All the new supporters, man, I appreciate it, man. All the viewers, everybody, man, I appreciate it, man. Both platforms, man, I appreciate everything y'all doing, man. I appreciate it. Get into it, man. Um, trying to get this grind on, man. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get some fishing in this weekend, man. It's about that time, boy. Ain't nothing more relaxing for me than fishing, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm, man, I'm just OG country boy, man. Don't mind being a country boy, man. I ain't trying to be certified. I'm just OG country boy, man. Still fish, you know what I'm saying? Still fish. Um, you know, uh, that's really about the only thing I do, man. I don't do no hunting and then like that because I ain't going to eat nothing I kill. So that's it, man. That's what I do, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, getting ready, get ready to make some moves, man, on a business tip, man. Uh, you know, got it's this travel time of year for me right here, man. So let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Growing older and wiser is a blessing, not a curse. Now, you may ask, why did I choose to do this piece of content today? Because what I see around me all the time is something that I never saw growing up. We never did. Our OGs, fathers, uncles, grandfathers, mentors, teachers, coaches, they never tried to be like us. They were proud of who they were. And no matter what you said about their generation, they stood proudly on who they were. Now, when I look around, what I see is men in their 40s, 50s, even saw a man in his late 50s, almost 60, walking around sagging their pants, walking around throwing up signs, out here wasting time doing the same thing they were doing 20, 30 years ago. And what I say is this, if you're going to waste time, at least be growing, wasting time in new areas of life. You know, I, if you're going to blow money, at least be wasting time blowing money on different levels of life. You understand? Instead of blowing money on the same thing, go blow money on a new car. You know, blow, blow some money on your wardrobe if you're going to blow money. But that's just an example of what I'm seeing out here. So let me tell y'all something. Gr growing older and wiser is the gift, not the curse. Dying young is not a fake champion by wise men. The worst possible outcome for you is to perish while you're still in your youth. That's the worst possible outcome. Now, better is the man who's never been born before because he's never been born. He never had to come in here and deal with none of the foolishness, wickedness, and evil that's in the world. But once you're here, why would you want to live a life that takes you out of here before you're able to accomplish anything, before you're able to, to benefit anyone, before you're able to gather anything to yourself and do the positive things that you were put here to do? It makes no sense. So dying young is not a fate championed by wise men. It never has been. It's a blessing, bruh. 
And so I give you, uh, let's look at Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Not his children, his children's children. You got to live a little while for your children to have children, brother. You can't be 21 and your children got, you got children. You can't be 30 and your children got children. Un, uh, we, unless you're one of them type, you in, in one of them environments where, you know, it was on and popping before, before it should have been, that we're not talking about that. You got to live a while, man. You got to let that salt and pepper man come on in, man. You understand? You got to let it come on in, baby. You got to let it, you got to let it come in. Let me tell you something, man. It is who it, I am. Listen, I am who I am. Either you're going to love me the way I am or you're going to hate me the way I am. But either way, it's going to be the way I am. You understand what I'm saying? So for a good man to leave an inheritance to his children, that means that good man has been blessed with long life. That good man has been blessed with length of life. Why are men in their 40s and 50s trying to pattern themselves and cater to younger men who have no experience, who have no understanding, who have no wisdom, who have no knowledge, not the type of wisdom, understanding, knowledge that you need as an, as an OG? It doesn't make sense. Brown Horn in 1975, my brother represented the GLG, man, represented the Mod Squad, represented the Kingdom, represented the Alphasphere. Salute to you, brother. Go, we go way back like eight track stacks, man, the old school Cadillacs. Salute, King. By the time I caught another, and yes, lots of adults out here suffering from arrested development. Man, that's exactly what it is. Arrested development is what it is. Trying to fit in to a group who doesn't deserve you to be in their group. Listen, and this isn't a knock on being younger, we've all, listen, we've, if you're young, you're going to get older. If you're an OG, you've been young before. This isn't about pitting one against the other. This is telling everyone, be who you are. If you're young, stop trying to act like you're OG. You're not. You got a lot to learn. If you're OG, stop trying to act like you're young, man. You'd had your time in the saddle. Settle into some OG life. Settle into some OG ways. It's like the whole player thing. Man, I'm going to be honest with you, man. If you're a 40 or 50-year-old player, you're, you're an idiot. It makes no sense to be a 40 or 50 year old player. It's arrested development, especially if you've been a player your whole life. If you was a player in your 20s, why are you still a player in your 40s and 50s? Some, some even 60s. And here's the thing, man. Listen, I know real peas, true peas from the turf. Man, they get in their 50s, 60s, and said, man, they ain't trying to play that game no more. They don't even want to be called by their turf name no more. They want you to call them by their real name, by their government name. They're legitimate businessmen now who are creating legitimate businesses with their government name. They don't want to be called that. They're not going to write it nowhere. Now, they'll come to some circles and, and, and they'll, they know the environments to go and be that. But in, in everyday life, man, they ain't trying to live that or hold no image. They, they just... Anything that they do based on their past life is based on the clout that came from their past life, not something they're trying to live now. But too many guys out here are trying to live in a way that they're not equipped to live. You got guys out here, man, flexing and, 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 and looking like they're getting to the money, man, and all that. Because all they're doing is mimicking guys who are really getting to the money. And it's not just it's not just men. You know, there are women out here as well who are, you know, 40, 50 years old, still trying to, you know, be, be, be the hottie at the club, still trying to be the young baddie. You're not a young baddie anymore. You're a beautiful woman for your age, but that's it. You're not you, you're not a young baddie anymore. Even even if even if you're in, in the best possible shape you could be in and you took great care of yourself, you're still not in that. You're still not who you were when you were 20, 25. And that's cool. That means that you've lived the life, that you lived that life already. Let me tell you something. The, all of us, no matter what age you are, no matter what generation you're in, you know, they try to separate us in all kind of way, Generation X, uh, Generation Z, uh, the millennials. They try to separate all of that. But here's the thing. No matter what age you are, you know that if you're young right now, you see people your age falling to the wayside all the time. If you're in your 30s, you're still seeing people falling to the wayside, but now the numbers are going up high. 
Sometimes you go back home, you know what you see? You see a bunch of dysfunction. You see the people that you grew up with, the people that you went to school with, they may be addicts, they may be homeless, they may be, you know, they may be dealing with some psychological issues. And you go back sometime going home is saddening. Bro, I don't really go, when, when, when I'm in Birmingham, bro, I really don't go to my area, man. My area is, is it's a slum, dog. It's a slum. So much so that I wonder if it was a slum when I was in it. Like, it's really a slum, bro. When, you, when I go through, it's a slum. Now, it can't be because there are houses that are empty now that weren't empty. There are abandoned buildings that weren't abandoned and all that. Man, it's a slum. And I just feel like anybody I see that I know who's still in that slum, bro, I mean, it saddens me, man. You understand? Because if you're still in that environment, you're still living the same way. And I'm going to be honest with you. And I told somebody this the other day. Man, I was like, bro, certain things I can't do. I can't catch a 20-year bid at my age, bro. I'm going to die in prison. You know what I'm saying? If you're 20, you can catch a 20-year bid and come on out, bro. I can't catch a 20-year bid, man. I'm going to be old as hell when I get out in 20 years, man. I, I can't do that. So it's a certain way I got to live, certain things I got to do, man. I can't do it. And so every now and then, man, I slide through, you know, and every, every now and then I roll up on some guys, man. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. What I see is absolute turmoil, man, absolute destruction, absolute chaos, man. And it's depressing, bro. I'm not going to even lie to you, man. It is. It is like like Brown Hornet said, man, it's full, full devastation, man, full of devastation and depression, man. That's all I'm telling you, bro. It's, it is. It is saddening to me. I'm telling you, the entire area, man, sometime I go through, listen, man, I, I've, listen, I've ridden, I don't go through the project, but I've ridden by them, but I don't go through them. I mean, I ain't got no reason to go through them, but I, I just take the long route. I take the scenic route sometime, man. Sometime I go through, man, I ride through all the projects on my side, man. Well, you know, ride by them, and they're not the same anymore, man. You still see the same little kids out there not knowing the life of despair that they're growing up in. And my thing is, man, to be able to navigate those environments and get to another point in life, it's a blessing. We're the ones who have the, bla the bragging rights in life. If you make it to a certain age from a certain environment, man, you're, you have bragging rights in this life. You have the right to say, look at what I've done with what God gave me. Proverbs 20 and 29. The glory of young men is their strength. The beauty of old men is the gray head. You so busy trying to hold on to your youth that you don't want the beauty. You know, they said the glory of young men is their strength. The beauty of old men is the, man, you should be, you should be striving in this life to get you some salt and pepper. And I ain't talking about, ah, push it. I ain't talking about that salt and pepper. I ain't talking about salt and pepper shakers. You should be striving to get to the point in life where you have you some salt and pepper. It's a blessed position to be in, brothers. It really is. To have your health and any bit of wealth and some salt and pepper. Hey, man, you, you, are, you, have, um, you have navigated the, the toughest portion of life. And it represents wisdom and understanding that cometh only through lived experience. Let me tell you something. You can get knowledge. You can get information. But wisdom and understanding cometh only through lived experiences. You ain't got no wisdom until you've lived to a certain point. You have no understanding until you've lived to a certain point. You just don't have it. You, you don't have it. Until you can navigate this life and look at the world and say, I don't care what you think about me because all I got to do is cut you off and never talk to you again if you think the wrong thing about me. So I don't care what you think. Nothing you say bothers me. It takes years of living life, years of experience, understanding that those people who have something negative to say don't matter. It takes a long time. We can talk about it. We can say it. But until you get to the point where there's absolutely no person on the planet whose opinion of you matters, you haven't come to that level of wisdom. And many people will perish before they get to that point. Because you think about this. Most of the times when you've gotten in trouble in life, it was because you were doing something that someone else wanted you to do, someone else needed you to do, or you were trying to impress someone else. Most of the times when you get in trouble in life, that's what happens. If you're young right now, you're in trouble and you're dealing with the law and in a particular way then you know is either something someone wanted you to do, someone needed you to do, or something that you did to impress someone. 
or something that you did to pay someone back for thinking bad things about you or saying bad things about you or talking certain things. Hey, man, listen, bro. Get, growing older is a blessing. I want you young men to start to navigate this life in a way that guarantees that you get you some salt and pepper, man. I want you to, I, I, that's what I want you to do. You might as well start calling me King Ray Ray, the salt and pepper, sir. That's who I am, sir, salt and pepper. And that's just the way it is, man, because the bottom line is, this level of wisdom and understanding that you can share the greatest thing you can ever do to the world is give them some information that can change their lives give them something that can benefit them in their journey give them something that can help them along their way that's the greatest gift you can give people because i will tell you success of any kind takes years to build into a sustainable commodity a sustainable commodity where 20 years from now, you're still successful. So when you look at the young athletes and you look at how most times, three years out of the league, they're broke, it's because they got the money, but not the success. Success is a mindset, and it takes years to build that mindset. You can't build that mindset in your 20s, bro, I don't care, because you're too, you're too worried about growing, getting more, growing, growing, growing. You can't have a one-track mind. If your mind is to get more, get more, get more, that's not a successful mindset. Successful success is about maintenance. It's about maintaining. As we talked about the other day on, on, on yesterday's show, the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs. Success is a mindset that's able to navigate the downs. You got to learn how to navigate the downs. Most people panic during the downs. Most people get in their most trouble during the downs. Most people try something too risky doing the downs. You got to learn how to navigate this life, man, from a position of power, a position of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. That's the position of power. Even when you're dealing with, you know, your woman in a relationship, the way you navigate that relationship from a position of power is through wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. The way you navigate every situation is through wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So this desire to be young forever, man, let me tell you something. The only way I would want to be young again is if I have all the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge that I have right now. Otherwise, I would never go back to being young. Because let me tell you what you can do. You can't make your young mind be as wise as your older mind will be. Your 20-year-old mind will never be as wise and experienced as your 40-year-old mind. It don't matter what you went through. By the time you're 20, you can't go through enough as an adult. You ain't even really an adult yet. You can't go through enough as an adult to match your mind and your wisdom, understanding, knowledge of, uh, of your 40 year old self. But what you can do, you can do things to maintain your physicality and stay pretty close to your 20 year old self. You understand what I'm saying? You got a better chance of putting yourself physically closer to where you were with 20 than you do at 20, putting your mind closer to where to be at 40 because the thing is, it takes experience to get to that mindset. There's no amount of book you can read or nothing. It takes experience to get to that mindset. So for me, all the dumb decisions I made, I made it when I was young. All of the time I trusted people, I was young. All of the time I thought someone was something they wasn't, I was young. All of the times I did the wrong thing, knowing it was the wrong thing, I was young. All of the times that I took risks I shouldn't have took, I was young. All of the time, man, listen, all of those times, all of my dumb years were my young years. That's why they call it young, dumb, and full of woo. And it doesn't mean you're dumb when you're young. It means that when you're young, that's the dumbest point of your life. Because the one thing that you have, you have a, a propensity to embrace taking unnecessary risk. instead of taking unnecessary risks. That's a great point, famo. It's easy to stay in shape when you're younger and maintain throughout instead of waiting until later to get in shape. You know what, you know what, famo? It is easier, but only because the mindset changes. The mindset changes. 
like looking at being in shape as the absolute necessity for your life it's a little bit tougher as you get older because you live so much life out of shape like you've been out of shape for 20 years you've been out man you, you look if you if you got out of shape at 22 and then you, you you're 42 and you're still out of shape you ain't never been back in shape you live 20 years of your life out of shape so to you you're like uh you know well I mean, there's other things I could focus on than that. But when you're young, you ain't got nothing for real. Most young people ain't got no paper. So if you ain't, you ain't got no paper, then you understand. You start improving the parts of yourself that you can. But it's definitely easier, definitely easier to stay in shape and all the way throughout than it is. But I will say this. If you spent a, a, a large portion of your younger years in shape, it's easier for you to get back in shape than it is for someone who just starting out, who've never done anything to get in shape. Yeah, they'll have those newbie gains at first, but to actually get in shape, develop the mindset, because they don't have the knowledge of how to do it. Somebody got to show them everything. But that's a great point, famo. Great point. DJ Fresh, what's good, brother? Good to see you in the joint. And here's another thing. The mind and spirit must be on one accord, lest your riches and knowledge be wasted. What that means is, if your spirit man is not guiding you based on what your mental man has learned and experienced, then you're going to have a serious problem. You're going to have a serious problem. Somebody can give you a million dollars. What you going to do? See, if your mind wants more money and then you win the lottery, but your spirit is not the way it's supposed to be, or you're, you're going to blow right through the money. You're going to buy a bunch of stuff. You know what you're going to do? You can take a million dollars. You're going to go buy a $250,000 Lamborghini. Why would you buy a $250,000 Lamborghini with a million dollars? That's a quarter of your money gone on a car. But some people do it. Some people won't think about investing anything until they spent everything and they down to the last $50,000. Now they want to invest. When what they should have done is taken at least $500,000 of the million and invested. At least. Now, I'm not saying that's all, but at least. I said you get a million dollar, man, invest 750000 250000 should get you out of everything. It should get you out of all your debt. It should get you, you know, whatever you want to buy. 250000 should get you that. Because really, if you ain't already got a house, you, you get a million dollars, you ain't in a position to just go buy a house. Don't buy a house. Unless you're going to buy some real estate, you know, uh, as a profitable investment, just don't do it. But you got to think about the mindset it takes. There's a mindset it takes to navigate this. You can't have the same mindset. Mr. Ellipsis say 42 and just start working out. I ain't never quitting again. Man, you might as well not, bro. There's no need to ever quit again. There's no need to ever quit again. The benefits of it are too great to ever quit again. I'm finna go bang after I'm done with this show, man. So here's the thing, and I want y'all to remember this. Learning from your mistakes works when you're younger, but you're less likely to yearn from them. But in order to grow older and wiser, you must learn from your observations of the world. You can't continue to learn from your own mistakes and live to be, you know, a, a, a grow into a, a wiser, older man. You can't do it. Because eventually, you keep learning from your mistakes. The, the punishment for your mistakes is indeed that, a punishment. There's going to be a fallout. There's going to be consequences, repercussions from your mistakes. So at some point, if you're still making mistakes by a certain age, then you're not going to be able to progress because there comes a point where you shouldn't be making mistakes anymore. You should have enough wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to know what you're doing. To know there's, there's no situation you can put me in that I have no idea what to do in. Now, what I'm going to do in those situations, it just depends on the situation. But there's no situation you can put me in where I just be like, oh, what, what am I supposed to do now? Because you get in a situation, you know what you got to do. You know what you can do. You know what you got to do. And that's just the reality of it, man. These are the type of things that, you know, we must understand. You must understand this. In order to grow older, and wiser you must learn from your observations of the world in other words you got to start learning from other people's mistakes at some point you got to watch other people and be like boy 
You done messed that up right there. Okay. I know not try that. That's why certain people in the, in the inner city, they never worried about trying to hustle. They never worried about selling any illegal substance. They just didn't worry about it. Because when they looked at it from a real perspective, they looked at it and they said, you know what? I'd rather go down here and work at McDonald's because you know what? I ain't never seen nobody work at McDonald's go to prison. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never seen nobody work at McDonald's and get their dough kicked in and everybody in the house get laid down. I ain't never saw that. I never saw anybody work at McDonald's, you know, get, get, they, you know, get, get put in the trunk of their car. I've never seen that. And so some people just say, you know what, I'm not going to do it. Then others of us were like, you know what, okay, I'm going to do what I got to do. That ain't going to be me. So you get out there and you had a mindset, well, you'll lay everybody down. But think about that. Think about the mindset that is. That's a mindset that's liable to keep you from growing older and wiser. It's liable, it's liable to put you in the pen. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. You got, you got, life, you got life in prison, man. You can't really get a whole lot wiser. You can gain information, but you can't get a whole lot wiser because you're stuck in one system and it's going to be that system. The entire time you're in there, it's going to be that system. That's why it's called a, the penal system, the prison system. That's why it's called that. You're going to be stuck in that system and it's not going to change. So it's hard to get wiser and gain more wisdom, understanding, knowledge without proper life experiences. You have to have proper life experiences, not, not just waking up every day. If you just wake up every day in the same environment, doing the same thing for 10 years, you didn't get no wiser. You didn't understand anything more. And you could read a bunch of books. You could read everything in the library, but that don't mean nothing. That's information. That's what that is. So I want y'all to understand, man. And I see that uh, somebody asked a question, man. Um, who asked that? Sean Daylight says, it's just lifting weights considered working out. I mean, that's, most people consider that working out. You're doing something else. Like if we go doing cardio, man, you ain't working out. When we say working out, we talking about, we talking about lifting. To be honest with you, man, lifting is, as a man, lifting is the greatest thing you could do for yourself. You could do all the cardio in the world, man. It's not, it ain't going to really benefit you long term as a man. Well, I mean, once you get to a certain point, because steady state cardio has a certain benefit, then you could do hit cardio, but hit cardio for people that just want to lose weight. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a very fast way to lose weight. But I'm going to be honest with you. Like, as a man, I mean, how many of us really want to lose weight? You know, how many of us go into it and say, I want to lose weight? No, we say, I want to get in shape, which means we want to keep as much muscle weight as we can and get lean at the same time. So you ask the average man if he weigh, you know, 190 pounds, he don't want to be 150. 190 pounds, maybe he want to be 175 lean. But he don't want to be 150 just to say I'm small. So when we, when we talk about working out, you know, hitting the iron is the main thing. Yeah, if you're hitting the iron, man, yeah, because you can, you can turn working, you can turn the iron into your cardio. I tell you what, man, if you, if you hit the iron and you ain't really doing no cardio, let me tell you what you do. When you hit the iron, don't take no breaks. Go hit the iron. Not on your heavy days, let's say, if, you, if you're one of those people that got heavy days where you do, you know, your three rep max and you try to max out on the weights and all that crazy stuff that break down your joints. Okay, cool. When you're young, you can do that. I hope you ain't in your 30s, 40s, man, still trying to do that ego lifting and all that, boy, you're going to break yourself down. Now, do you want to get some good resistance? Yeah, but I mean, trying to just, I'm going to see what I can lift one time. I don't know what my one rep max is on nothing because I don't want to get up under no weight that I can only lift one time. It's too heavy. What, what benefit am I going to get it's, unless it's a, just an ego benefit of saying, I, I can lift this one time. Nope. If I'm going to lift something heavy and put it back down and lift it again, I need to be getting a result from it. And I ain't talking about no ego boost result. It, that don't boost my ego. So if you don't take no breaks between your workout, I'm talking about the only break you take is, now, you got to do supersets. So I say, man, do supersets. Do your superset. And me, I like to do opposing muscles. So I like, I like to, if I'm a superset, I like to do a chest and a back. I like to do a buy and a try. I like to do a ham and a quad. So if you're going to do that, man, I say, man, you go in there, you do that. Just don't take no breaks. That's why people say, like, like for me, bro, I'm not going to be in the gym long in about 45, 50 minutes because I don't stop. I go in. I hit my chest movement. I hit my back movement. I go back to my chest movement. Go back to my back movement. I go back to my chest movement. Go back to my back movement. If I'm going to do three sets, I do three sets. Then I move on over to the next set of movements. I set them up. You know, I may, t I, I may 
it, I, I only give myself a minute to go set up I because you know and that's just how you got to structure so sometimes you got to set up beforehand that's why I go in the gym so early in the morning because it's never too packed where I can't set up like this man I go I go through man and I, I go to the next two movements bam I hit them back to back chest back go back chest back go back chest back and then I go to my next couple of movements I set them up chest back chest back chest back and then I go to my fourth set I go check ch my fourth round I go chest up I mean chest back chest back chest back I head up out that thing I'm done huffing and puffing like hell man breathing harder than you ever gonna breathe doing hit cardio man I'm telling you boy I, that's that's how I do it because the thing is man you can you can get cardio cardio is cardio cardio is just about keeping a keeping a, a even steady heart rate for a certain period of time that's all cardio is that's what cardiovascular improvements are. Just a good steady heart rate for a certain time. And if you're rolling in there like that, man, you can roll through it. I'm telling you. So for me, yeah, three, four times a week, man, man, that, that's, I think that's phenomenal. Because I mean, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to lift on Saturday on the Sabbath day, but man, yeah, man, I just, and, and here's the thing, man, and I got a, I got enough of a, I got enough of a setup at home where, I can get, I can bang a good workout at home. You know what I'm saying? Now, I can't really, I can't really do back at home. You know what I'm saying? My back, I mean, you know, my, my back is my joint. So, you know, I, 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 I need to have heavier weight than I got at home to properly work my back. You know what I'm saying? I can do some burnout sets on it, but I don't like to do burnout on back. I like to pull, you know, I like to really pull, really pull some weight for my back. You know what I'm saying? So, that but even with chess i had to, I, I i i can get a good workout at home if i had to say if the gym if the gyms were all closed if right now we had another pandemic and we couldn't go nowhere i could still bang at home and at least maintain you know what i'm saying but you got to go do it man you got to do it yeah that's it bliss that's it that's really what it is man because because you really just turn your workout into hit cardio that's really all you do you turn it into hit cardio, man. So it's, it's pretty much what Markel was saying. You just turn the workout into hit cardio, man. Instead of separating the two, you just turn them. And really, the thing is, man, man, you just work out how you work out. Just go do something. I say this. Work out how you work out. Just go do something. As long as you're getting a result, do what you're doing. So another thing, man, I say to you is this, man. You only live once, but I want it to be for a hundred years. Like I want to live for a hundred years, bro. I want to live for a hundred years, maybe 120 with a good quality of life, man, because I'm taking care of myself and I'm eliminating that stress. That's the main thing, man. You have to eliminate stress. You have to eliminate stress. And the best way to eliminate stress, you have to get into the mindset of just not caring about most things. Like I just don't care about most things. You understand? I really just don't care about most things. There are some things I care about. There are some things I don't. You know, but the, but most things I don't. There are a few things I care about. Most things I don't, man. And so you only live once, but I wanted to be for that. And so you live every day like a 24-hour lifetime. I tell you what, man, I got a clip I'm going to play for y'all, as a matter of fact. Let me play this clip for y'all. This guy, this guy went pretty ham with this, man. It's a, it's a dope clip. I like it. Y'all peep game on this clip. I'm 57. If you were to go back in time and have a conversation with your 20-year-old self, what is the best advice that you would tell to your younger self? You got a moment. Yes, sir. Let me show you something, all right? It's this strip here. This strip here is from 1 to 100. You hear me? Yes, sir. Now, the average... Female lives age 81. Average male age 75. So I'm going to put my finger here on 75. And I'm going to tear it. I will probably never see this part of life. If I do, it would be a blessing. But if I don't, I'm not going to be as amateur. I can't dunk a basketball then. Maybe the same quality of life. All right? Now, I look real young. You may think I'm about 25. But I'm really about yeah. I'm 57. So I'm put my thumb here on 57. And I'm going to tear it. I'll never see this part of life again. So this part of the ribbon here is all I got left. And maybe your ribbon is a little longer, but you can have one bad sickness and the quality of the ribbon ain't the same. What you got left 
is what you got left. Live each day as a life in miniature. Live it on steroids and wake up with gratitude. Thank God I got today is a vote of God saying this is for you. Live it like you dream it. You only have so much life to live. So live that life to the utmost of your ability. And always remember that every day might be your last. So don't live it like you might die. Live it like you might live. Peace. See, when you think about it from that perspective, man, like I'm telling you guys, if you're 25 now, I promise you, within five years, it's going to look like you're, 30, it's gonna, it's, you're going to be 35. It's going to seem like five years have passed, but 10 years going to pass. That's why you have to intently focus on living your life every day. Don't just go through the motions. Don't just, you know, feel a certain way. Don't just, you know, enjoy a certain thing. Don't focus on what you're going to eat. Now, man, you go to other cultures, man, they do not focus on food. They, they eat what they're going to eat, and that's it. Sometimes they don't even eat. They don't even eat three meals a day. You go to most cultures, man, you see people, they, they don't really even eat three, three times a day. They, they figure out what they're going to eat. They eat that one meal. They may eat some fruit or something. Or some days they may not eat anything. They eat when they're hungry. We're over here tomorrow. You got to eat three meals a day. Or you got to eat this much. Or if you want to lose weight, you got to eat five times a day. Or you got to do all this, man. You ain't got to do none of that. You ain't got to do none of that. All you got to do is eliminate your, threat, your stress. Don't overeat and work out regularly. That's the result you're going to get. It's going to be your result. And so when you hear this man say this, man, you got to live every day like it's a 24-hour lifetime. Okay, I woke up today. I got today to live my lifetime. I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow. So all I can focus on is today. I'm going to live my lifetime today. I'm going to do everything I can today. I'm going to do everything in my power today. I'm going to do everything I love today. I'm going to work real hard today. Day. I'm going to focus on what I need to focus on today. I'm going to give everything my best effort today. And then tomorrow, if I wake up tomorrow, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to focus on the thing I need to focus on because tomorrow going to be today. The only day that matters is today. Tomorrow don't matter until it becomes today. Next week doesn't matter until it becomes today. Your birthday next year doesn't matter until it becomes today. That's the only day that matters, man. We don't have time to focus on all of these other things. We don't have time to focus on living life or what you're going to do, you know, if this happened or, or, or I ain't going to do that. It might take too long. Hell, you may not have long enough to get it done. So you better work on it while you can. Life isn't guaranteed at all. So every day could be your last. That's why if you've navigated life, past the pitfall stage where you don't know nothing and you learning on the go and you making mistakes and trying to correct mistakes and learn from mistakes at the same time if you make it to a point in life where you understand the things you need to avoid and the things you need to embrace then you have the blessing of reflecting reflecting on life is a blessing you have the blessing of reflecting when you navigate life to a ripe old age, I'm not there yet. I don't have the blessing of reflecting. I'm still grinding. People go, man, man, you all the, man, I love it. I love what I do. I love getting up. I love grinding. I love going to do the things I do. I love hitting the gym, man. I love prepping these foods, man. I don't start recording my preps like once a day, once a day when I, uh, once a day when I cook a meal, man, listen, I record it every day. It's just, it going to take a, it, it, I'm going to have to put some time aside to edit these things. But every day, man, I just recorded one today. I just recorded one yesterday. Just recorded one the day before that. Like, I record these things every day, man. This is going to be new Patreon content. You know, I'm going to start promoting it with a, with a, with a, thumb, with a screenshot, or I mean with a thumbnail of the meal on, uh, on, on the channel. And then, man, y'all just shoot on over there, man. I'm, I'm about to show y'all, man, how to, how to live a true, a true bachelor life. Like, a true bachelor life. A true alpha existence man like the truth of it the truth of being the, a king in your own kingdom in your own world you ain't got no kingdom yes i do if you live in the back of a camper that camper is your kingdom be the king of your kingdom if you live in a mansion that mansion is your kingdom be the king of your kingdom you ain't got to be king of the world just the king of your kingdom but live every day like it's your last man Navigating life to a ripe old age gives you the blessing of reflecting that's what i'm looking for i want to be 85 years old doing absolutely nothing but what I love to do every day. And sometimes doing absolutely nothing. Sitting down, chilling with my little wife and watching TV all day. Or drive, hit, taking a road trip. 
not really worrying about nothing. That's the goal. The goal is to be to the point where you can reflect over decades of life, where you can reflect over generational changes, where you can reflect over society changing over periods of time because you've lived through it all. That's the goal. Mr. O to Info, salute the pops, man. Salute the pops hitting that 90, man. So it don't take a whole, it don't take a whole lot at home. At the end of this show, man, I, I'll tell you, I tell you what I got at the career, man. I, I'll show it to y'all one day, man. I ain't gonna show it to y'all today, but I, I'll show. I, I, I'll do it. I'll, re, I'll record a video of it, man, just to show you, you know what I got at the career, man. Listen, I got enough stuff, man. Let me tell you something, boy. I can, you know what? I thought about, man, just starting to just starting to show some home workout, especially for my truck driving partners, man. Cause I know y'all been needing some workout when y'all on that road, man. Y'all out there eating them greasy, eating front of them greasy spoons, man. I, I know, I know y'all been needing to get it in out there, but. All the years you've lived are evidence of finding grace in God's sight. If you're 30, you found enough grace in God's sight to make it to 30 because you know somebody who didn't. If you're 40, you know somebody who didn't make it to 40. If you're 50, you damn sure know somebody who didn't make it to 50. If you're 60, man, you know almost all your partners didn't make it to 60. And if you're 70, you ain't got no partners no more. They all gone. All your time spent with family because all your partners gone. It's rare that you see two 80-year-old men out kicking it together. They grew up together. They've been knowing each other for 70 years. They've been knowing each other for 60 years. It's rare. Because it takes a focus on taking care of yourself. You can't live your life like you only live once. If you're going to live your life like you only will live once, well, live it like you're going to live forever. Don't live it like you only live once and you're going to die tomorrow. Live it like you're going to live forever. Quality of life is a gift from God based on taking advantage of the blessings throughout your life. Just because you're young don't mean you're going to live good. That's some young homeless folks. That's some young folk that's struggling. That's some young folk that working two jobs and still can't make ends meet. Man, I was watching a documentary the other day, man, on, uh, uh, what was it, man? I think it was on. It, I think it was it, I think it was on California's minimum wage. You know, California minimum wage it went up to twenty dollars, and some of the some of the restaurants are closing. Twenty dollars for restaurants with at least sixty national locations who unless they make, unless they bake their own bread. I was watching a documentary. I, I I think that's what it was, man. But then man, there was a chick on there, man. She'd have moved from upstate and moved down to Florida, Kissimmee, Florida, and she was a uh, like. A high-ranking manager, like a, a like a regional manager, district manager, or something, for a restaurant chain up there. Got in a relationship with some guy, left, end up moving down south. Man, that girl work at a restaurant. She work at two restaurants, as a matter of fact. And because of that decision she made to not protect her life, ended up way down there. A couple of kids by the guy. It's a weird scenario. A couple of kids by the guy. His mom moved down there with her. He didn't. I don't know what happened to him. They didn't really tell you. He might be jammed up. Might, he, might, he might be in the grave or a cave. But, man, she working, I think, 37 hours a week at McDonald's. Bro. Was it McDonald's? I don't remember where. Yeah, I think it was McDonald's. She working 37 hours a week at McDonald's. And she making $900 a month for 37 hours a week, bro. Thirty-seven hours a week, bro. I mean, and she making nine hundred dollars a month. And she got another job, I think she made. And they won't give her. They, they cut her just at the point where she can't get overtime. The other job, they won't. They won't give her. They won't. They won't. Uh, they won't give her full time hours. Cause then, then she got to have. You know, of course, you got to have benefits and all that. So they just keep rotating shifts and keep people from getting all that. So I think on the other job, I think she make like. 400 a month man she she working two jobs 37 hours at one and like um i think maybe like 20 hours at the other one every week man she making like 1300 dollars a month dog. living in a hotel man like i think it's the nice end hotel and the hotel costs her like 800 a month so out of 1300 a month she's spending 800 a month now 
the woman, her, the, her, 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 um, her children's grandmother, she can't work because she got to have somebody at the crib to keep the children at, at the at the little night nice scene to keep the children, man. And I and I I ain't looking at the adults. I'm looking at the children, and I'm like, man, this little boy and girl, man. You know how little kids. They don't need a lot. They just need a roof over their head. They need clothes on their back and they need food to eat so they're not hungry. You give them that, they think they're living in hog heaven. They're happy, they're playing, long as they can watch their cartoons on TV. A kid don't care what the TV is. They just want the TV to be on cartoon. They don't care. They just want to watch their show. But I look at those kids and I'm like, man, those kids, man, they don't even know just the, the life, the point where they're starting. But here's the thing. Some of you started from places like that. And look at you now. So you mean tell me that you don't want to see what more you can get out of life? You scared to grow older? You scared to grow wiser? You don't want to know what more you can get out of life? Man, listen, you don't want to know the thrill of being an OG? Still, and I ain't talking about no paymaster. I'm talking about, a, I'm talking about the prism of the ism. Still getting young tenders. You don't want to know what the thrill of that is? If you if you 25, you're supposed to get 22, 23 year old chick. You're 25. Even if you're 30, that's cool. But you want you you want you, you don't want to see, you don't want to get the thrill of being an OG man still knocking down bad young tenders, man. You don't want that. You don't want the thrill of that. It's an amazing thrill, brother. Don't deprive yourself of all the greatness that comes with growing older and wiser and navigating this life man don't do it don't deprive yourself of that don't tell yourself that's not the good part of life if you in your 20s you in your 30 dog you ain't got to the good part of life yet you ain't even hit your prime yet you ain't hit your prime yet because i want you to be honest with yourself just imagine yourself being in your 40s and being in shape Just imagine that. It's a different life. Just imagine being 50, 60. Imagine being 60 and being in shape. Man, I was in uh, I was in Atlanta one time, man. I think I, I think I was headed to uh I think I might have been headed up to Connecticut. But I was staying in Atlanta overnight because my flight, uh my flight didn't take off till the next morning. And uh, I actually had a chick, a young chick, man, that I was uh that uh that I met man that she was gonna come kick it with me that night but um so before I took off the next morning and uh so man I'm in so the next morning before I leave for my flight um I'm downstairs you know in a hotel restaurant man eating breakfast so I'm down there man the chicks sat beside me and uh you know she was there her whole family converged there so they can go so they can go hike up Stone Mountain like once a year on their dad's birthday they come up there her dad was sixty so you know she was like my dad be killing us. Like he's 60, he be killing y'all. Man, she showed me a picture of her dad. Man, man, the boy had eight pack abs. Adonis cut eight pack abs, 60 years old. Running up a hill, beating all the children and grandchildren, hiking up a damn mountain every year. Every year. That's the life that you can have. Stop looking at the worst possible possible scenario of growing older and say, oh man, I don't want that. I want to stay away from that. Nah, bro, don't do that. Look up some of the best possible scenarios and think about that. You don't have to have the worst of any, any era of life, any era of life, any age of life. You don't have to have the worst possible scenario. You can have the best. And I want you to understand that the best is there for you, man. It's there for you. No, I'm saying, man, listen. I got a, I got an 83 year old partner right now. Yeah, I told you, man. So my, most most of my partners are well, uh, quite quite a few of my partners OGs. You know, OGs. So for me, yes, there's some there's some things that they that they may not be a part of. I know how to navigate those things. But the majority of my financial advice comes from guys who've been rich for 30 or 40 years. You know what I'm saying? Like who've been who've just been rich for 30 or 40 years. Guys who pay cash for their homes. That's the level of that's the level of wealth that I like. You know what I'm saying? Where 
you move some things around, you pay cash for a home. You see, you want to, you want to, you want a million dollar home? Okay, you move some things around, you pay a million dollars cash for the home. And so for me, the guy does, uh, he does incline bench for reps. Well, for, for high reps. You know, he don't, he don't want to get bigger. He just, he likes the movement. So we talking about three sets of 20. He doing incline bench man with 25 pound dumbbells. He doing curls and hammer curls with 25 pound dumbbells. He doing a uh, lateral raise with 12 pound dumbbells, front raise, 15 pound dumbbells. Now, if you work out, that's not a lot of weight, but you know what kind of weight it is. Like you can, if you if you work out, you understand that you can live more, but to be an 85 year old dude, man, you understand, man, that dude banging. And on top of that, Four days a week, he's doing 45 minutes on the elliptical. And I'm not talking about no slow, ha, 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 ha. I'm talking about he racing on the elliptical, running on that thing. So I want y'all to understand, man, that you don't have to have a poor quality of life, man, just because you, you, you growing older and wiser, man. I'm telling you, that's the prime of your life, man. The prime of life for a man is 45 to 60. If you ain't made it to 45 yet, you ain't hit your prime. Don't die before you hit your prime. You're going to miss out on the whole great portion of life because you chose to go ahead and do something crazy and end up kicking the bucket before the end. Take care of your health. Protect your wealth. Prioritize yourself. And never allow yourself to go left when you know you need to be going in the right direction. Having wisdom and insight on all true life experiences is a blessing. See, I don't know everything because there are some things you can read in a book, some things you can go to school for, but when it comes to life experiences, there ain't, there ain't much I can't tell you about life experiences. There ain't, there ain't many things you can be dealing with that I can't tell you nothing about, that I can't give you no insight on, that I can't give you no wisdom on. That's the blessing of being an OG. So when when so I, I just look at certain terms like yeah man 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 it's old head blah 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 I be like bro let me tell you something if you think old head is an insult you're an idiot you're immature and you're an idiot if you think that's an insult no more than I think you know like call you man little young well that that's not an insult age is not an insult and there's only a certain group of people who believe it is. And so if you believe age is an insult, you're not on my level. And so I don't deal with people like that. I don't deal with people who believe the shade of skin is an insult. Man, y'all light skin, blah, blah, man. Y'all dark skin, blah, man. I don't deal with people who think like that. That's low level thinking. That's low vibrational thinking. Those people will never become successful. Those people will never do major things in life. They'll have spells of doing well and then they'll fall off. And then they'll have another spell of doing well and then they'll fall off because there's a mindset. I told you earlier, success is a mindset. It's a mindset. And you got to start embracing that mindset, developing that mindset while you're young because it takes years to develop me. Now, let me tell you the number 10 thing, man, that proves that growing old and wide is a blessing, not a curse. At this point, I know for sure. Because I've witnessed the sustained blessings of putting God first in all I do. So when somebody say, man, I ain't no God, you believe, I don't say nothing. You can't, you can't, you can't kill my belief in the most high because I've experienced years decades even of the sustained blessings that come from putting God first in all you do. And I've also seen the immediate rapture, the immediate backfiring of any plan to not put God first in all you do. I've seen it. I've seen it for more years than some of you been born. So there's nothing you can tell me about it. I know for a fact that putting God first in all you do is the top notch way to live. GC, I see you brother. Been a minute, man. Good to see you in the joint, bro. Good to see you. Brother GC in the building. So that's all I want to tell y'all, man. Big Mo, I see you, man. So, growing older and wiser is a blessing, not a curse. And here's some of the reasons why. Number one, dying young is not a fake champion by wise men. Don't make sense to die young. Don't make sense to live a life where you're going to die young. Now, you can't control when you go, but you can show influence that you said you can show make make some moves that get you out of here quicker. Number two, 
Proverbs 32 and 30, Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. You got to get to a certain age for your children to have children. No matter how long, no matter how long, young you have children, you got to get to a certain age for your children to, to have children and get old enough for you, to, to, for you, for, for your will to be read to them. Number three, Proverbs 20 and 29. The glory of young men is their strength. The beauty of old men is the gray head. Number four, wisdom and understanding cometh only through lived experience. You can get knowledge and information through a bunch of ways, but wisdom and understanding cometh only through lived experiences. Number five, success takes years to build into a sustainable commodity. Athletes, entertainers, normally they're always broke within three years of, of their peak. Why? Because they don't build a successful mindset. They get to some money. Making money is not success. Success is a mindset. It takes years to build it. The mind and spirit must be on one accord, lest riches be wasted because you're not thinking your way through it. You're just feeling your way through it. Number six, learning from your mistakes works when you're young, but to grow older, we must learn from our observations of the world and others' mistakes. There's only so much punishment you can take from learning from your own mistakes before you give up on life. There's only so much we can take. Number seven, you only live once, but I want it to be for 100 years, don't you? I don't want to only live once and then be gone when I'm 25. That's why you live every day like a 24-hour lifetime. This is your lifetime. Everything that you want to do got to be in your lifetime. You got two kind of people in the world. They want to have all the fun they can have because they don't know when they're going to go. Or you got people, man, who want to get on their grind as hard as they can because they don't know when they're going to go. Some people like to have fun doing crazy things. Some people like to have fun being on the grind. You know what's fun to me? Being on the grind. You know what's fun to me? Getting to the money. You know what's fun to me? He healing the world. You know what's fun to me? Giving what I can give to my people. You know what's fun to me? Giving wisdom, understanding, knowledge out to the brothers that's ready to receive it and apply it to their lives, man. That's what fun is to me. All the other stuff, I don't want to go bungee jumping. That ain't fun to me. I don't want to jump out no plane. That ain't fun to me. Fun to me is doing what God put me here to do. That's how I have the most fun. That's where I get the most peace. That's where I get the most fulfillment. That's my fun. Number eight, life isn't guaranteed, so every day could be your last. So navigating life to a ripe old age gives you the blessing of reflecting. It may be your last, but if it ain't, you get the blessing of reflecting. Number nine, all the years you've lived are evidence of finding grace in God's sight. And if you have a high quality of life, that's definitely a gift from God based on taking advantage of your blessings throughout life. Having wisdom and insight on all true life experiences is the blessing of the OG. And number 10, knowing for sure the sustained blessings of putting God first in all you do. So putting God first in all you do coming through for you is absolutely true. And that's what me and all my guys in the kingdom of Ray Ray do. We put God first. So look, brothers, I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate it, man. GC, famo, I appreciate you brothers being in the building, man. I appreciate everybody that's sliding through, man. It's been super real. Hey, man, look, King Ray Ray will be back. I appreciate y'all, man. I see a couple of brothers came through. Nate Guapo, Lorenzo Weiss, man. I see you, man. Big Mo up in the joint. Bliss Vision. I see you, man. Human Chapter in the building, man. Ball into your fall. I see you, man. Cozy Rail, what's up, man? I see you, man. PV. Again, my brother, Mr. O with the info, man. Y'all subscribe to my brother, Mr. O, man. It's good brother right there, man. Fixed and Crypto, man. I saw you in the joint as well. Let's get ready to slide on out of here, man. Y'all put God first. Keep grinding and growing, my brothers. Peace.